All right, everybody, just a quick intro, and uh, I guess first apology, I've not put a lot of content out lately. I've had a lot of things going on in general, but I also noted uh, after doing the Dumble that I kind of got burnt out of doing too many videos a week. I was trying to kind of increase my output, get a little bit more visibility for the channel, and just end up burning myself out. So I'm going to slow back down to one video a week. I'll still try and spit in some live streams here and there and still do the same kind of good content that are tech tips, but I'll just get random ones per week, and once I start on an amp build, I might do every week for that amp build until it's done again, etc. So um, th that being said, this video is just going to be talking about the schematic that you're seeing right now. Uh, I'm going to be doing a, a repair on a orange rocker verb 50. And here's the schematic of the main preamp section and the, and the phase inverter. The power tubes uh, are available online. If you see uh, here in a second, I'll show you a link to it, but I'll also put it in the, in the section below. I kind of... Uh, Hopefully that'll all this will all kind of make sense. I fumble around a bit, but I finally get where I'm going and get it fixed. So you'll hopefully see some of the troubleshooting process and me making some false starts, but finally getting there. So uh, everybody, uh, please do give me a like, a thumbs up, subscribe uh, if this is the kind of stuff that uh, is interesting for you. Thanks, everybody. All right, everybody. Today, in the middle of my build of the Dumble, which you guys will be watching, this will likely come out after it, I've had a uh, somebody in, put in touch with me that needed to have an orange looked at. Uh, the basic complaint is just that it seems to not be having great sounding output. Uh, I have a new set of tubes, but I first wanted to just get a little bit of some general voltage readings uh, and make sure things look good. I also did notice there's a decent amount of kind of crusty looking stuff on the board. Uh, so I might likely kind of clean that. Also these 100k resistors, the anode resistors look really kind of overheated and dirty. But effectively it does just look kind of generally dirty, but not horrible. Capacitors look in good shape. I don't see any that look uh, really wrong. Nothing seems burnt that I can see. Nothing smells funny. So it could just be that the tubes either A, need to be biased properly, or B, the tubes just need to be replaced. And he did say he's had it for a year or two, and the tubes came with it. He doesn't know how old they are. Uh, they are some JJs like I've gotten as well. So it'll be just replacing like for like. But first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to power it up, and I'm going to kind of check the bias of the tubes. I'm going to be inputting... Uh, first of all, actually, when you... When you bias these tubes, you want to turn all of your volumes and everything down because you want zero signal input to do the bias setting. Um, so um, I will be powering this up and we will be checking some voltages just to make sure it seems like the voltages uh, are not too wild. But before I power it up, I will actually I need to take a second and pull those schematics up so I can look at them and we'll go from there. So I'll be right back. All right, so here we have it. Um, I've got a schematic in front of me as I need it, but uh, we're on the clean channel. We're about to turn this baby on, and I will keep an eye out. I do have a speaker hooked up because I want to hear for crackling or popping or not noises, but we've got the volumes of all kinds down, reverb down, etc. cetera. Um, I hear some noise coming out, which means we have some kind of output. So let me carefully probe right here. Can't, these, these silly things are in the way somewhat. Um, so we've got 381. 381, okay, cool. 381, we're getting output. Hey, it works that way. 382. All right, so it's got good voltages there. I'm getting 141 there. I'm not getting a great connection there. 154 on the top, it should be a little higher. 225, yeah. So these are the anodes of the 155. They do list a lot of test points, but not where the voltage used to be. So it is a bit, of, a little bit of a weird schematic that I've seen, but 0.8 volts of the cathode of that one. All right, so I'm getting a little noise out. That means it's working that way. It looks like everything looks you know, happy, nothing smoking, burning, flaming, and he said it does work. So what I need to do, this doesn't have an ease of checking the bias directly. So what I have to do is figure out where my power transformer main, um, sorry, output transformer main leads are. We'll shut the amp back down, um, and I will check my voltages again to make sure they're discharging. It is, it's down to 30, 20. So we just want to make sure that drains to a safe range. Um, one of the things I've learned is a good trick with a with a one that has a low impedance side uh, is that you can switch it to low Z side for voltage readings, and then that will drain caps because that it sends a pretty good route to ground. If you look, the voltage is very low right now. That just drained it the rest of the way. So, um, 
we should be good and safe to be touching the amp. So what I want to do now is I want to measure from the center tap of the output transformer to each leg of the output transformer so that I can get a um, measurement of the um, resistance. So I'm going to switch it to resistance and we will write these values down. Uh, yellow, black, and white. So yellow, black, and white. So these, and there's, that should be my center tap, I think. And even says TX16 on here on the schematic, it says TX16 white, TX17, and TX15. All right, so what I can do then is I will clamp my uh, one side of this to the center tap. I'll measure resistance. I'm getting about 30.7 ohms. And this side, 30.3. So, 30.7 black, and what did they say, 30.3, 30.3, 30 30.2. 30 All right, so put 30.2 is going to be yellow. Now, we're going to do math on this. The well, way you do this is you take... I'm now going to turn this back on. I will leave that connected to the center tap. I'm actually going to switch to a clamping one because you want to kind of be careful about this. Let it warm up, get to a good idle point, and then do the math. And this is a way to measure the bias of the tubes. So I can now clamp this onto... It doesn't matter which side, but we'll go to black. We'll set that to voltage. And I will measure a voltage that's basically going across, oh, I want it on millivolts because this, well, let me think that out in my head. Generally, it's gonna, we want about, I think it was, I, was, I had the data sheet up. For a 66, you want plate current, uh, and we were in the 300 and some odd range, it's looking like you wanted about, uh, oh wait, let's see, AB, it's saying 280 volts. This These ones run a bit higher, but the, the 6V6S can handle that higher voltage, but it's saying 70 milliamps um, is the maximum, or is that the maximum or is that the standard? I'm trying to remember. But anyway, it's saying 70 milliamps and you want it to be 70% of that value so that you've got room to breathe. So if I pull up my calculator quickly and I do that math, 70 times 0.7 equals, so we wanted about 49 milliamps. So if I was in theory to then kind of do the reverse of the math on that from the values I just got, uh, you normally would take your voltage, divide it by the resistance, and you get the current. So in this case, I know that my, what my resistance will be. I don't know what the voltage will be, but I want the current to be 49. So um, let's do the switching around math of that. That would be, um, let's see, so doing my algebra, uh, we would take Voltage divided by resistance, but we don't know the voltage and we want a current. So we would times the two together. Okay, so we times the resistance times that current that I want, 49 milliamps. So do 0 0.049 times 30.7 should get about 1.504 volts is what I should be seeing across that if that was optimal. It may be a little lower, which means we're running a little bit lower current, but... Um, oh, actually, I might be saying that backwards. Say we were at, um, just say we were at point oh, like six. That would be 1.8 volts. So yeah, higher current means that the, the voltage will also go up. So yeah, that makes sense. The more voltage, the more current. So I wanted it at about 1.5. Um, the other one is also pretty close, 30.2. Uh, oh, and I need to let me do that, 0.59 times... Uh, 30.2, and that's 1.78. Uh, let me make sure I did that. Did I say it was 0.4? No, I think it was 0.49. Let me double check again now. So 70 times 0.7 is, is, 4, point, is 49 milliamps. Okay, so um, 0 0.049 times uh, 30.2 is 1.49. So if I went to about 1.45 volts, if that's what I was reading on that, that would be the right bias point. And I have a little bias adjustment screw and I could go a little lower than that, but we're gonna first just see what we get, how many volts this is. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this back on now. And 
wait for it to kind of heat up and see what my, my reading is there across that transformer tap. So the reason this works well is because a, a transformer has a high voltage um, going across it. So I'm at negative 1.3 volts. And I might be thinking of the math wrong there, but that seems to be almost wrong. But that also would mean it, it, it may, I'll have to double check that. But if I check this across to this guy, it's about 1.37. So um, I will want to, I want to raise that value a little bit and get that near that 1.4. So these may be biased a bit cool. I'm trying to think about why that's negative. I, the, oh, I have it backwards because the high voltage comes in at the center tap and then it comes out through the kind of the grounding side or whatever on the, so I just have those, I should have the red really to the center tap and then my black to that one. So that's why that's negative. So, but the value is correct. It's just swapped in, in, in the, the siding of it. So I just now need to quickly get over there and dial that up to one point, um, about 1.7 volts. And then we'll double check the math at that point. Sounds like we're getting a little bit of noise out of it too. All right, so we have, right here is the bias. I'm gonna keep one hand out always. And then, okay, you guys see that? If I just turn it slightly, it should start going a different direction. Oh, you know what? I need a flathead screwdriver, not a Phillips. It's not, it's not seating, it's popping out. So I'm trying to think of how I can do this safely for myself and not block you guys viewing. I just do not want to ground anything out here. Oh, that went a little high. Let's go back down. Like I said, I want it about 1.45. Of course, it went back down a teeny bit. But these kind of adjustments are usually just hair, tiny, tiny adjustments. And I think I got one point, I said 1.45 to be safe. We're right on the verge now, because I think it was 1.47, but let me do the math again. Right now I'm connected to the yellow. The yellow is 30.2. So we'll do 1.49 divided by 30.2 equals 0.49, and then some change. So that's that's set at 70% exactly. Uh, and if I check the other side now, one45 Five divided by 30.7, we get 0 0.047. And, the, and yeah, so basically that looks pretty good. And it also means that we're pretty well balanced uh, as well. We're very closely balanced between the two within a couple of milliamps. Um, so I call that well biased. So now what I want to do is um, I want to Go ahead and I can kind of pull these guys out. I don't need these anymore. Um, what I want to do is put a little signal through it. I've just got a, a signal generator here and listen to um, what it sounds like coming out through my speaker. Turn the volume up a little bit. channel volume. I don't seem to be getting any output of my... That's weird. Oh. Let's turn that back down. I have my uh, sick gen pointing in the wrong side. I was putting them both to the ground. All right.
That's enough annoying sine wave. So it sounds clean to me in that way. So we're gonna take a short break. I'm gonna bring a guitar down and plug it in and just see what that sounds like. So we'll be back in a minute. All right, I'm back. So there's a, I played a guitar through it and it does sound a bit, like it wants to feed back in kind of a bad way too quickly. Uh, I tapped a few of the tubes. They sound a bit funny. We're gonna go ahead and let you hear that. It's gonna try and feed back like crazy. So this may be really loud and ugly, but let me turn the, on the clean channel, it's not bad at all, but I'm not here to try and play the, I'll, pl I'll pr demo the amp in a minute, but I just wanna show you if I bring the volume and the gain up a little bit. The buzz is my crappy guitar, so ignore that, but, um. Um, can you kind of hear the little tinging? On one only, I think that tube is starting to be a little microphonic and starting to get a little ugly sounding. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut her back down, swap tubes with the new ones I got. We'll recheck the bias with you guys. And then I'll play it again, see how it sounds. And if it sounds good at that point, we'll be good. But the, the dirty channel sounds kind of crummy. The clean sounds okay, but you're not pushing it that much. So the cleanness is good, probably just because I'm not putting it at max volume and slamming it. But the output tubes, I think, starting to do some bad things. So I think they are potentially just worn and in bad shape. So we're gonna try and swap that out. I'm gonna go ahead and shut this off. Uh, I'll swap the tubes out. We'll come back in a minute and then we'll you know, re-bias and see how it sounds. All right, buddy, we're back, retubed, got it hooked up to the yellow wire, and we will power back on. We'll let that start coming up. We have all of our volumes down, and we're gonna check the bias now. And I did switch these the right way now. That's a lot hotter with these tubes, and that probably is because these tubes can conduct better because they're in better shape, so I've gotta dial that down quick. All right. So, sorry I'm blocking the, a bit, but I wanted to get that. So you can see now, I, I brought it back down. I'll turn it back up a teeny bit and slowly get me to that 1.45-ish range, 1.4. It was up to two. So that tells me these tubes are just conducting better and working better and started really pushing quickly at the same bias setting. So I think that that is another sign those tubes were a bit worn out. So uh, let's try that. I'm on yellow. So I've got 1.51. Oh no, it's, uh, it, it is gonna take a little while for them to warm up, but 1.5, let's just do 1.5 divided by 30.2 is 0 0.04966. So that's almost 0 .0, uh, 50 milliamps. Still at the, you know, 70, basically the reason people choose 70 is it's warm enough that it's not gonna wear the tubes out too quickly, but it's not too cold so that you start getting things like notching distortion and whatnot as well. So um, that is very close to that limit. I'm gonna check the other side now and see what that's at. It's also one, look at how much more balanced these were too. It was 1.50 on the other side. So that's a pretty good sign that the that this is a very well matched set up. So we're gonna try and just the teeniest bit down. I wanna take that, yeah. All right, so 1.4, oh, see it's still bouncing a little bit. 1.49 divided by 30.7. Yeah, there we go, so we're 0.485. So we're now just under that point, that 49 milliamps. We're gonna give this a listen and see how it sounds now. So I will, uh, the volume is gonna be way too hot for this microphone, so I apologize ahead of time, but I'm just gonna listen to the guitar a little bit and see how it sounds, so. And this guitar is a beater and it's gonna have a lot of noise, but that's okay. Well, it's not a beater, but I, it has a bad grounding problem, so. Oh, I'm on the dirty channel. So if you hear that buzz, if I touch metal, it disappears. It's because this is a crappy guitar. So not crappy guitar. It's a nice guitar, but I need to fix the, the grounding. 
Sounds pretty good clean. Uh, let's put it onto the dirty channel. Turn the volume up a little, gain up a lot. So I'm gonna play it a little bit more, but I think it's definitely sounding cleaner to me. It's not, uh, other than the horrible hum, but it doesn't have some of the weird artifacts, but I'm gonna put it at a louder volume, which will distort on this and sound like crap anyway, so I won't do that to you. But uh, I'll check it out now, and I think that's probably all it needed. The bias is set better, the tubes are replaced, and it just sounds to me a little bit cleaner and better. So hopefully that's about all we'll need for this. And uh, you guys in the process got to see a little bit of general checking. Oh, that's annoying me. A little bit of general checking and troubleshooting of the uh, bias settings of an amp that does not have an easy bias test point. So there you have it guys, thanks. All right, hello everybody. Um, today, I am, um, I've got the orange back on the bench because I was informed by the user that after they got it back, it's still making a lot of noise. And so I thought, well, I better start tracing things through this thing, so, but I wanna show you something that I found out. So, um, the amp, I have an input signal coming in. If you look right here, there we go. All right, so as you can see there, let me quickly, let's see, what is my probe set to? It's set to 1x, let's switch to 10x. All right, so as you can see, I have signal here. And we're at the 50 millivolt range, so it's a couple hundred millivolts, right? So I have signal coming in, and let's try and catch that so it's not shaky on us. Anyway, all right, so you can see there's signal there. So what I did was I went in then to the next um, section here. Uh, the so if I'm looking at the preamp section, effectively this is my clean channel. The, uh, that's the input grid. So the next stage basically would be the V9B, which is gonna be, or actually V10, let me see. I'm trying to remember which one it was. V10, this one here is V10, which is the, uh, I think that's the dirty channel, the drive channel, but let me, well actually that might be clean. Cause I'm selected to, oh no, I'm selected to dirty right now. But anyway, the point being, V10, the grid should be identical, right? All right, so I've got the signal here. So, all right, so let me take a step back here. The last video pretty much was pointless because I was doing something stupid. All right, so, okay, everybody, we've got the orange back on the bench. I'm starting with the, the scope because um, we'll kind of zoom in afterwards when I show you what I've been probing. But I first wanted to explain, I'm going to have the schematic up and we'll kind of talk through it. But I, if I take the input signal, which just comes off of my uh, uh, signal generator, you'll see I've got a very low level signal, right? There it is. I then move over to the grid and it should be identical. Grid identical, right? So if I then move over to the other side of that, you can see it's magnified quite a bit. So I'm at 500 millivolts. The volume, I can adjust that with the volume, right? I can get it right up into near, not quite clipping, but almost, it's pretty, you know, that's just the, and this is the clean channel. So that's looking good. So then I come over to the next step really would be, um, I can look at the V7. Uh, is what takes in the input at the next stage. So I can put that on there. We'll see, it's clipping a little bit, but I could dial it back down a touch and get out of clipping. The bigger point really is just I want to trace the signal where, where it's getting messed up. Uh, and then that uh, goes through another gain stage and outputs, uh, to, this is the buffered loop basically. So that's also coming back looking okay, right? From the other side. So the next thing I want to see is my phase inverter because that's the most important next step. The phase inverter V5, if I go to that, we get good signal, right? That's looking good. So now I'm gonna go to the other side, which would be basically V5B at uh, basically R29 and where C8 connects in. This is right here. And look, output is 
significantly smaller. In fact, let me come back to this first one. See how big that is? It's almost filling the whole scope, but I go to the other side of the phase inverter and I get almost nothing and it just looks horrible. So to me, that says one of two things is wrong. Either the phase inverter tube is in bad shape or there's something in the signal path there that's messing it up. Tapping around the air with the chopstick right now does nothing. So we're gonna kind of come back down to the board now and show you. Effectively, as I was pointing out, let me get my chopstick because we are live on this. I don't wanna cook myself. I basically have a test point here and then I'm also testing right here at the grid. Those are those first few points of VTAN. This is the main input for the clean channel. Um, and I've got the schematic. We'll kind of go over that as well. Um, then uh, I jumped up to V7, which is the next in the chain because V9 is the other channel. Uh, and V7 is showing uh, the decent looking signal as well. But then when it comes into over here, V5, that is our phase inverter. V5 is showing very strong signal here at basically R26, which connects into the grid there. But at R29, which is connecting to this coupling capacitor, it looks abysmal. So as a quick test, I have a spare ECC81 here that came with the fender. It's a Jan um, that, you know, that I'm doing the dumble. This will stay in the, but I'm going to quickly power it off and switch that tube and see if we can get a better response out of that guy. It's gonna be a little hot, so I have to be careful not to boing my fingers. So that is uh, an unbranded Chinese brand tube that I can see nothing you know, very useful on. So we're gonna replace it with this guy. All right, so now let's give her a turn back on again and we'll check our signal at that same point. So again, it'll take it a second to warm up, but I will check uh, my input grid. I still have signal coming in. Uh, and I have it amplified well there. So we're going to come up to... That's good. And we're still getting really weak output on the second half. That's kind of weird. Um, so something in this phase inverter is not really in good shape. I'm not quite sure what it might be. Um, because that is still, even with a good, a known good tube, we're getting really good on the left side. Actually, let me bring you back up to the scope. And we'll show you yet again why this is not working. So this is the left side of that. Looks good right side of that looks really anemic that is why he's saying that things are not sounding good he said it just sounds kind of crappy on the clean channel and i would say that's probably similar on the drive but the drive kind of covers some of that up but effectively we're getting a weak output on half of the stage so since it's not the tube i have to try and take a minute to try and go through and measure some different com component values around there it's possible something is drawing things down or pulling that out so that we're losing you know, nearly half of the signal on the other half of the phase inverter. So um, in fact, actually, now that I think about that, while we've got it here, I could quickly um, check the output on the power tubes, uh, which will be pins, let's see, uh, or, or no, not the output, but the input where it's coming in, pin four would be R10, R12, Oh no, sorry, that's pin four is not the right one. It's, oh yeah, it is, sorry. They just have this, they're just kind of backwards for me, zero. So, oh no, it's pin five, sorry. Uh, so pin five is a 1.5K resistor that's coming in from PS1 and PS2. So let me look. Is R11 one of those? Yes, R11, okay. So if I look right here at this pin, we're getting very strong signal. Let's go ahead and lower that down to a scale that we can see. Going the wrong way. All right, so this is now in the 10 volt range. If you look at that, that's one side. We'll now look at the other side. Oh, well, that actually, interesting enough, looks fine. They're all within the same range. So maybe I'm mistaken there. All sides are getting equal levels of signal. Oh, wait a minute. Those aren't inverted. 
if you look at, well, I, I guess I don't know for sure. I'd have to do apples to uh, oranges comparisons. So because, you know, each, each half should be inverted from the other half. But since I can't really see um, where things are lining up, I'll have to get myself a second lead and compare the two. So let me get a blue, one of my other ones out here. I can find one. And we'll hook this up to the second channel. Because, uh, you know, this is what the goal of what I'm trying to do here is figure out what's wrong. So, um, do I have the ability to clip onto that guy? No, no, it's not trying to help me here. All right, there we go. So, we'll turn channel two on. And we see that signal. Let's get channel one going again now, which it just has to be one of the ones on the opposing side. Oh, and they are out of phase. Okay, sounds good. Um, so let me just try and adjust. And they pretty much look like they're good to go. All right, so I am getting good output to the output stage. Uh, and uh, you know, when it gets to clipping, it's you know, clip, it's clipping pretty consistently on either either side. So maybe I'm at a bit of a miss. Um, I'm misunderstanding a little bit there. The phase inverter. To me, with that signal coming in, that looks really clean. I am at volume. I'm at not at max volume, but if I go, uh, let me just try and see if I can clip this one on as well. So. All right, so now you can see, oh wait, that's kind of weird. Oh, okay, I bumped the 1x, 10x switch. All right, so my two probes are both at 10x. Invert is off because I want to see that they're out of phase, which is good. And they both look to me to be pretty good. If I were to turn the volume down just a teeny bit until I get, and actually my, my master volume is at max. Uh, I can turn that down as well if I wanted to. Oh, that's for, I think that's for the drive channel. Never mind, that won't help there. So we don't see a specifically, a, that to me looks pretty clean right up until I'm at like volume of like nine o'clock almost. And it's, sorry, not nine, it would be, yeah, nine o'clock. So, well, or if we're to say maximum volume is 10, I'm at a, probably about eight, seven to eight. I'm like three quarters of the way around. And it starts to barely start clipping. But even if I push it to max clipping, it's still not an ugly waveform that's doing anything more than kind of some typical waveform compression. Um, I would be happy if anybody out there can tell me that that's actually incorrect thinking, but ultimately when I dial that back down, I get some pretty decent looking signal just at, again, about three quarters volume. If I switch to the dirty channel and then bring the, the volume up for that guy, let's turn the gain all the way down, but the volume up to max. Oh, I have to give it some gain for it to have output. So that stays pretty clean. Actually, let's look at those. So this is at max volume, but gain is only up to maybe a third. Um, if I switch those, they're pretty close. Let's do this guy into distortion a little bit. Oh, that's the dry one. And then we'll do the gain one and see what gain gives us. Gain gives us a lot more actual output. Let's turn that down a little. And it's doing a bit different notching, but that's because it's designed to create gain, the right kind of gain. So effectively, to me, it looks like all of those are pretty clean. I don't know what he means by that being noisy. So uh, I might have to um, plug it into an actual amp and take a listen, but I wanted to give you guys a look at kind of some more of the general troubleshooting that I try to go through uh, of tracing a signal through the path. The amp itself seems like it's okay. The only thing I'd say that seems funny to me is that the anode resistors of the preamp tubes 
for um, all of them look like they've got some kind of white fuzzy stuff on them and don't look super clean, but they don't look horribly broken either. So at this point, I'm going to try and um, see if uh, I might just keep it on the clean channel and then pull out uh, the, I'll plug it into an amp and I'm going to pull out and replace, I've got some spare tubes, like I said, I'll pull out and replace the V1 uh, on the clean channel, which is, uh, I think it was, I said V10 or V9, but I'll be able to see really quick. I'll, I'll unplug any other tube I don't need, which will be the reverb tube. It'll be the other channels tube that I don't need. It'll be the, um, but the, but I do need the channel, um, the, the effects loop is required in the chain, but by what I'm reading on the schematic. So I'll have to keep that in there. So anyway, we'll get back to you guys in just a minute. All right, everybody. So I wanted to show you, I found the problem. This area right here, this has a loop. You'll see a red, a blue, and then a black wire. The black is just shielding around it so that you kind of keep noise from getting into the signal path. That had wiggled loose. I had, I had tapped, I think, around here in initial troubleshooting and got a lot of weird noises, but couldn't really say I knew what it was. Well, it was because I was touching and bumping something near this connection. Today is using a chopstick around the area, touched it, and uh, when, I, when I touched the chopstick around that area, it popped like the noise went quiet and then really loud. And then I tried to reflow the solder and it basically went bad. It like came off. So I found that I had almost no lead left. So I don't know if that was initial or if it's just over time, but I kind of had to pull back a little bit of the sh shrink wrap and then re-solder that and then everything came back into, into quality view. So the other thing here is that I also had to, um, you saw me troubleshooting and finding a, a problem with the phase inverter, but I was actually a false uh, idea. I actually was incorrectly assuming that that other side should be the same level, but it isn't because it's really not getting any grid directly in. It's just what's ble leaking back on purpose through a couple of resistors uh, from the other stage. And I'll show you the, uh, the schematic of that, and I'll kind of give you that explanation of that again, possibly uh, before the video or at the end of the video to explain that part of it. So we'll explain that a little bit more, but hopefully that'll make sense. So effectively, when I went and uh, I turned the thing off and was trying to think of what else to do, I went to the output stage and I was getting perfect output on all four tubes. Very even, very good looking. So I knew at that point that the problem was not related to the output. All right, so at any rate, we'll let you guys get a good view of the inside of the guts of this guy. I'm trying to get focused, there we go. You can see um, over here, power stage, power uh, whatnot. And then we come across over this side is a lot of the outputs, the different types. So we have multiple different speaker outs. We have a effects loop. We have that kind of stuff on that side. Coming over here, this is the, the preamp phase. These four in a row are just the, the or this, sorry, six in a row are all of the uh, 100 ohm, or 100K resistors that go to the anodes of the tubes, etc. So it's pretty neat layout. I like it for a, a circuit board. So at any rate, there's the filtering right there, the main filter caps. So um, anyway, there you have it, guys. Uh, we got it working. I will I'll try and have a demo. What I'm going to do is the owner, I think, said he wanted to come in and be a part of the video. So I'm going to have him come demo the amp and we'll show it off. So see you then.